Debian is a vast and um, messy and wonderful creative environment. So there's uh, obvious accounts that everyone can have and give you the right to be credited on contributors.debian.org and you are a Debian contributor. And then people become Debian maintainers, some people become Debian maintainers to do packaging on uh, independently. And then people become Debian developers which is exactly the same as Debian contributor plus a Debian org address, voting rights, and various accounts you don't know. Right. <laughs> so minus, minus, yes. <laughs> and you can actually get elected. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. So we are giving responsibility to people we cannot trust. <laughs> okay. Um, so, audit account, uh, anyone can create at any time. Debian maintainer, there is a procedure to apply. Debian developers. There is a procedure to apply called new member process. And that's what we are talking about here. Um, um, so the, the general idea is that um, you contribute to, um, one doesn't need to be a Debian developer to contribute to Debian. Um, but at some point, when somebody is already a Debian contributor, um, it's nice to get situated. It's a bit like, I don't need to be a German to work in Germany, but after 10 years I've been living here, it's nice to be able to vote for the federal elections. That sort of idea. Um, the process... Um, so... Um, how many of you already know about all this? How many of you didn't know about this kind of structure? Okay, so mostly... How many of you do not raise your hand? <laughs> So the, 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 the point of having this meeting is a bit about uh, figuring out how this is working at the moment, if there are problems, what could be improved, uh, so that it's not just the people who kind of, the core developers of the project that have an idea of what is going on, but that other people know it because for example, I'm the person that develops the site and I'm Debian org mostly, but I write code and then I tend to forget to tell people what I did. And then, uh, and then there is confusion. And so at least once a year we can have um, a meeting like this and try to improve it. Um, the new member process has Uh, has a number of people involved. There's Dan, that have responsibility. 
over the membership in Debian. So uh, I am one, Muon is one, Ganef is one, but is not here. He took the bring new members in Debian thing very seriously and started really creating new ones. <laughs> uh, and so I think he is now cradling a new developer at the moment. Um, that's the yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, and then there's uh, front uh, front desk that uh, help run the process. And Francesca is a front desk member. Oh, I miss someone. I think that's about it. Uh, the there's member. more who are not here. And the next member, does that also count? Hmm? <laughs> yeah, uh, Walter uh, is a em uh, emeritus <laughs> member. And front desk of the NM process is not front desk of that comp. But I'm both. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there's. Application managers that are Debian developers that have a conversation with people who are getting an account to kind of figure out if uh, if it's people that already have experience of Debian. Um, and then there's advocates. That are people who, that any Debian developer can say that person is not a Debian developer, but he or she should be. And that starts the process. So you, you, you enter somehow by invitation, and then <coughs> there's the rest of the ritual. And that's, I think, the. What did I miss? ENMs. The new members. Oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, the applicants, of course. Uh, how many of you are Debian developers, Debian maintainers, uh, applicants, advocates, application managers. Okay, there's a bit of a, a bit of everything. Good. Uh, Okay. Um, shall we start with asking problems? Yes. Yeah. Why not? Right. Um, so it's not just me talking, uh, because uh, it's, uh, because it's a buff. It's a buff. So we are all here, and there's a rather diverse representation of things. We also have some keyring maintainers, at least one, uh, who prefers to remain anonymous. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that after, um, in the NM process, after we decide that a person should have an account, we ask uh, keyring maintainers to add their GPG key to the Debian keyring, which then makes their key recognized to the rest of the system for voting, uploading, and, and all sorts of things. And then there's Debian system administrators that create the account on Debian org machines. And that's, so there's a bit of everyone in the room. 
Maybe not. That is just the But. Oh, we have a gun. There it is. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um. So, any of you who has questions, problems, feedback? I have a question based on something that Rico and I have been talking about, which is sort of the disconnect between the Debbie maintainer process and the, the new member process, and how that looks from the other side. I mean, I, I never went through the Debbie maintainer process that didn't exist. So for those of you that are Debbie maintainers who are either already gone through the new member process or are in the process of, of starting it, what does that look like? Is, does that work for you, or does it look weird, or I have no idea what it looks like from your side, and I'd love some information. Well, it actually looks to me <laughs> odd. I'm a Damien man you know, since 2008, 2009, and I started my book two work, and then my, unfortunately, it was bad, not so good. And I had, at that time, already the fear from the philosophy and the sensing questions, not the technical stuff. So no problem for me. But these questions, stuff looks for me hard, so from the, because I have no clue about the sensing and my English is not that good. Mm -hmm. uh, that was here, yeah, was my question in here. So how uh, sensing philosophy and how hard this is in mm -hmm. today, um, how long it will take to which one did invent and what did invent and what did invent and what did invent and what did invent. Right. It looks harder than it looks. Yeah. May I ask? Yeah. I went through the Debian maintainer. I haven't yet started the Debian developer process. In my case, it looks like I started maintaining some packages just of sheer laziness because I didn't want to mess with my system. I started with this. Then I uploaded, then I got uh, sponsor, my usual sponsor, after some time, uh, wrote me, okay, you are providing quite okay packages, do you want to be the uh, maintainer? Mm -hmm. And then uh, he pointed me to the wiki page about it, uh, I wrote uh, I wrote the emails, uh, started also, I got the uh, advocacy from him, and then uploaded him, and that, that's all. And after some, uh, at pre previous step, uh, I went to involve from a course I, I heard that you are using, uh, you are never asking questions, you are doing your everything on your own, so you you should be ready for Debian developer. But at the same time, from looking at Debian Devel and stuff like this, I'm not sure whether this is correct approach because as we heard today at the keynote, one of the keynotes, Debian is about people, not about doing only technical stuff. So I'm wondering whether I'm ready for Debian developer. Uh, just be, do you mean that you don't want to read or write that many emails? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to read emails. Okay, I did not write full emails about the system. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why. See yeah. anyone? <laughs> you did not write any. You did not write any email about system D. You said no. <laughs> you are ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, just just go for it. Um, okay. You don't. Uh, Debian Devil is about the whole Debian yeah, technical I, I, ecosystem, I, I, and you don't need to be part of all of sub of all subsystems. So if you, I don't know what you're doing, maintaining. Uh, this is probably uh, some Python package. Yeah, there's uh, a Python universe. You can as well stay in there and never leave it. Right, right. <laughs> you, are, you are leaving it, but um, um, I, I'm leaving it a bit. I, I'm also part of the Debian house, not very active. Yeah. Um, I think uh, or I stumbled about your sentence. You are not asking any question anymore. You are ready for Debian developer. I think if if this is a criterion, I should lose my status uh, <laughs> because I have a lot of questions. I can't answer myself, and so this. Uh, for, uh, I also asked on Debian mentors, which is to mentor people because we have so many different fields of knowledge. Not a single person can manage this all. So yeah, I keep on asking questions and apply as developer. One one thing that I noticed 
is that the a lot of the documentation for the new member process is from before Debian maintainers were a thing. So if you are a Debian maintainer already, you start in a different part of the process. Like if you're just following the checklist, the first like four or five steps don't apply, mm -hmm. and none of the documentation, like it doesn't. None of the documentation reflects that. You simply start as being advocated. Okay. So it wasn't clear about exactly the process. In, until you ask, and then yeah. of course. Uh, worse, worse yet, there's a third way of <coughs> of entering the process because you can al already have a Debian account technically for reasons of port of boxes and whatever, and then again you enter at a third point. Yep. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that it's very important for team members and DD to just remind people who are contributing to try to apply, to tell them to apply. Exactly because of this. I mean, I felt very intimidated by the whole DD thing, and I had uh, team members in the work in the work team telling me mostly every day, "No, you should apply. No, you should apply." And well, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can Can you please, for those who don't know, uh, tell how you uh, applied and that you are not working with packages and so on? Ah, yeah, I'm a uh, non-uploading DD, which means that I don't have uploading rights in the archive because I don't do packaging work, basically. And I have every other right at the DS, so yeah, that's it. Uh, my enemy process was slightly different because obviously I, will, I, I didn't need to get tested about packaging work. So other technical so yeah, that's it. You can be an unapproved DD as well. It depends on your interests and what you do and that kind of stuff. And the, the reason there's a distinction is because if somebody is not interested in uploading, then we can just skip a lot of checks during the new member process. Um, it, it's about responsibility, so uh, normally there's what's, what's checked in the new member process is that one knows what Debian is about because we, we want to trust that people uh, become voting <coughs> members in a community that they have some idea how it works because otherwise there's not much point uh, voting uh, and then uh, we need to trust that people know how to interact with the rest of the community, so like using the backtracking system, that, that, that people understand the, the social contract and that in free software guidelines that are the essential mm, common guidelines of the whole process, that people understand uh, the um, rules for using Debian infrastructure, so you don't log into a Debian machine and uh, start sending out spam or something like that. Um, and that's for everyone. So being responsible members of the community, because the account kind of gives all what you get from being, from what you don't have as a Debian contributor is official responsibility. Uh, you, you kind of have a responsibility towards your own reputation, but that's it. But when you are a member of the project, you have a responsibility of you know, sending out emails with a Debian org address, somehow representing the project, or voting, or logging into machines. Um, so we kind of want to make sure that you have roughly an idea about that, and if you have roughly an idea about that, apply to be a Debian developer. Uh, and to get the flow rights, we also want to have a look that <coughs> you have an idea about maintaining packages, which ideally should only mean having a look at your history of contributions in Debian and saying, well, you are maintaining packages since 2008, and apparently you have a clue, so good. <laughs> And uh, there could be some extra question asked, but 
that you have a minimum of two questions. Yes. But for, but for Pascal skills, no. <coughs> At some point, you have a minimum of two questions, but yes. In Pascal skills? Three and here. In the whole project. In the whole process. Ah, yeah. the whole process, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, like the. Oh, which I uh, have. I, ha contract. I yeah. have an idea of automating that, I'll tell you later. Um, yeah, the, the whole thing has only two mandatory questions, which is please sign this, your reply to these two questions with your GPG key, and the question are did you read the Debian social contract and free software guidelines, and do you agree with them, and uh, did you read the Debian machine uses policy and agree with it. And there's only one valid answer for those who didn't get that part. <laughs> <laughs> so someone recently said they'd already done that as part of the Debian yes. process to me, and we're complaining that they had to do it twice. I know how to fix it. I have a plan. <laughs> I will implement it in the next days. So I want to implement the concept of validated uh, key fingerprint in the site. So when you have a, a record in the site, you get a, a fingerprint, and you can say validate it, and it will ask to answer those questions, sign and paste the signed bit, and check the signature. At that point, it goes in a queue where frontless people go, yeah, 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 that pasted stuff was nonsense, yeah, yeah, yeah. You answer no and no <laughs> because uh, you can't machine parse the content of that. Um, and everything that is a book says that, that that fingerprint has a signed statement on record, so we don't need to ask for that anymore. And everyone can just go into it. And that's kind of something I want to do because that then enables applying for Debian maintainer using the site. It's kind of a precondition to that. So I had that idea recently, and I'm like, ah, time to implement it now. Um, yeah, maybe to abstract, abstract from the technical uh, implementation of that. 20 years ago, Debian was a small project, and getting into it was pretty easy. You just from okay. had one phone call, but then um, there were more people, and um, the getting into Debian part needed to be formalized. That was when the new member process was in, invented, it, was, it used to be called new maintainer process for edit confusion. Um, and at one point it got very complicated and that's when people start to get afraid of it, like being afraid of uh, uh, getting to, having to answer too many uh, questions about licenses. And yeah, currently our since a few years ago, we are trying to get that back to the more sensible state. Like, if you have been packaging stuff for, yeah, since 2008, it doesn't have to be that long. Then we just um, hand wave that part and we're good with it. You will still be required to ask answer some questions about licensing because this is not obvious about, uh, usually not obvious. Uh, obviously visible in your previous Debian contribution, but if it is because you have been posting to, I'm not going to say legal, but Debian devil or project for some time, answering questions reasonably, then you can probably also hand wave this part. So um, to answer two questions at the same time, yeah, just apply, give it a try. It's not that bad. Uh, bad English is the problem. We, we've had applicants who didn't speak English at all, which somehow worked out, but you <coughs> could make yourself uh, understandable, so this, it, it, will, it will just work. Okay, thanks for your answer. Yeah, the general language in Devin is English. We don't send like a vote ballot in multiple languages, so basic English, like understanding written English, helps. But Understanding little English, understanding written English is very broad. Yes. Yeah. You process is a conversation. So if you yeah. write something that doesn't matter, yeah, English isn't that much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
if you send me something I don't understand, I just ask you back, what did you mean there? Could you please rephrase it? And then that's no problem. And there is no time limit for the reply. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so you are allowed to more. use the internet. I have uh, <laughs> the ideas I got go on the durations and they were long in the waiting time and how long it took to yeah. become a terrible developer. Uh, sometimes you have a problem with that, just yeah. complain. Okay. Yeah. If you get um, stuck in the process, complain to front desk because we, we cannot know, but if you mail us, there's um, a, a new thing that is happening now because we have a problem with some application managers tend to take longer and longer, kind of lose enthusiasm but not retire, just kind of have, they have a really good intention and they still want to do it but they don't have the time and so uh, they, they sometimes they take like weeks to reply and that demotivates people and, uh, and that's currently a bit of a problem. It also works the other way around with applicants taking longer and longer and demotivating the application manager. Uh, but um, we now have a prototype to calculate the median response time to email of a person in the process. <laughs> so we can see if we have some application manager that's starting to become struggling and say, well, take a break. And, uh, yeah, but it's okay. I mean, it's perfectly normal to have a life and to not be able oh, yeah. to. Oh, so, <laughs> so really, don't feel bad with yourself. If you are not able to apply in time, ju just notify the front desk or the other person you're talking to, and it's fine. Uh, you can be put on hold or something. But yeah. So the ideal process, and I say that to shame because I'm really bad answering email, but the ideal process should go through in a week. <laughs> and oh, obvious from the video <laughs> no, I, I, <laughs> I actually went through it in a week. It's not that impossible. Yeah, uh, I had an applicant that went through in two days. And that was because I was slow as an application manager. <laughs> <laughs> he would reply to each of my maze of questions within half an hour. Because he, he got bored uh, waiting for an application manager, so he downloaded the list of all the questions and answered them all to have some fun <laughs> while he was waiting. Okay. And then he was just copy pasting <laughs> his previous answers. And then, so he was like unusually fast, and I was like, What's going on? And so he explained, and I was like, Oh, that's actually an excellent idea. <laughs> do you have a name, or do you want to do it? Reinhard uh, Tartler. Oh. Right. But there's been cases where it has been that fast, even with non pre made answers. Yeah. Um, I, I think one of my uh, NM process took three days because I was one day on vacation or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the idea of a week is because when you join, you already have experience in Debian. If the application manager sees that people really struggle with finding basic things, then one should say as soon as possible you may want to try again later and have more experience in Debian. If somebody joins and it's impossible to find any track record of contributions uh, visible and one asks, so what did you do? And one says, nothing really, I was just passing by and got curious, then one can say uh, you want to get a bit more involved, then come back. So, ideally, it, it should be obvious that a person uh, is ready to become a Debian developer. There's a bunch of exchange of questions to work out the non-obvious bits, like, it, can this person be trusted to upload new software in Debian? Do they have an idea whether a license is free or non-free? or they can't tell and they should ask somebody else. This third thing is extremely important. <laughs> um, 
because none of us are lawyers. <coughs> Uh, there are licenses that I read them, and I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, I don't understand it, so I won't upload it, and I'll ask, and that's responsible behavior. So, absolute knowledge is not requested. Responsible behavior is requested. That's the idea. And responsible behavior is able to say, well, I don't know, I'll ask, and that's perfect. Um, so yeah, um, and so a quick ping pong of four or five emails answered in a day or two, that gets you at the end of the week. And that's it. If somebody is busy, one can say, I'll be busy for a while, let's put it on hold, I'll be, uh, I'll be back from holidays in September, or the application manager can say, I'm busy for work this week, pay me back at the beginning of next week. Those can happen. But that's kind of the expected process. If an application manager becomes busy, there's a button on the side to say, give this applicant back to front desk, and we'll find another person. And there's no shame in that. Uh, if an applicant becomes uh, uncomfortable with the process, it's totally OK to say, sorry, I think this is not my place. I'll come back after six months. It, and there's no problem with any of that. So, so that's the ideal thing. The practice is different because um, I guess so far it's a system that follows the rule of inflation of bureaucracy, where when people are responsible for making a choice, they try to make sure that it's the right choice and always ask for something more. Uh, with the good intention of improving the process, but that tends to inflate and require more and more energy. So, as an application manager, it's much better to tell a person, you should come back after six months, than having lots of enthusiasm and trying to teach them, and the pleat of energy over the course of months, trying to say, okay, then make any upload of that package, try to fix that thing. Let me see that you learn that thing. That's mentorship. It's not application management. Um, men needing to mentor means not yet. Uh, there's that young mentors for it. I hope they do their job well. Um, so yeah, that's the expectation. Uh, real life may diverge from expectations by a week or two. More, it's a sign that there's a problem. Um, so, application managers here, can you tell me some stories or reasons why things get stuck? I want to spend more time reviewing applicants than I have time for, and so I have to call them. And right. Then a month later, I get an email from them saying, Happening. Yes, I really want to look at your packages. Um, I just can't find time right now. Right, that happened to me the last round, and that's why I'm not coming here again. Okay, uh, here's a tip for you don't look at that packages, look at the change logs. And there's a function for it on the site. And if you see that they're uploading packages since a bunch of years, and you Google for their name and Debian, and you don't see people screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Yes. Especially if advocates the said. The master is not happy with us. No. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I've done it for years already, and the packages are already in the archive. They really don't have the package anymore. Because the package must be okay. <laughs> And, and I'm serious, I'm, I'm not joking here. If I say things like, you can copy and paste URLs in your NM process supplies, I'm serious, you can. What is not allowed is pasting, pasting things with no attribution, because that's plagiarism. Uh, but it's totally OK to say, I have no idea, I Google, here's what I found from that link, it sounds reasonable. I learned something, thanks for asking, it was wonderful. Yay. 
So it's it's the, the other th problem of of the NM process is that it looks a lot like a <coughs> university exam or something or a high school exam, and 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 so it comes with a lot of baggage that really does not fit. Um, so yes, it's an exam with no time limit and the availability of the whole internet and the possibility of asking people over IRC. <laughs> and mostly things are asked to make sure that one is aware that things exist. There's one of my favorite um, One of my favorite questions is this one. And he could tell it. Oh, uh, is there any of these bits of Debian that you haven't heard of or of which you would like to know more? And then there's QA team, localization, website, bugs washing parties, the wiki, that tags, conflict of interest for that tags. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Alios, the and so on. Or anything else you're curious about. Note that I only want to show that they exist and to offer pointers of tips if you are interested. So there's questions like that, that that kind of gives you an idea of the spirit of of things. Uh, any more stories about things getting stuck? Oh, uh, Stefano. Yes. And in case you don't feel comfortable saying looking at the change log and saying this person is good enough, you have two options. One, reject. Two, give it back. I might be too strict to ever accept anyone then. <laughs> <laughs> then we could have you only ask philosophy and procedure. <laughs> <laughs> and then hand over to another AM to do the technical bits. Oh, I just stopped doing the packages and saying at that point I'm probably happy with the change logs. Yeah. Have you looked for the change logs of your own packages? <laughs> do that. It's a wonderful ego boost. <laughs> like, what did I do in 2005? <laughs> Me? Oh, and uh, um, in theory, from tomorrow, there will be more bugs Debian org data into contributors Debian org and you may find out that you've been a Debian contributor since 2003 because we write mails to the BTS from way more time than we think. So that's going to be interesting. I, uh, I have had a case of me getting stuck in the process because the applicant sent a mail and it got stuck in my spam filter and he <laughs> didn't want to ask me because I thought something was wrong mm -hmm. and that got stuck for I think a month before mm -hmm. he sent another ping mail which I think is fairly problematic because I should have sent a ping mail as well yeah um, <coughs> applicants in the room how long do you wait before contacting front desk if your application manager is not replying to you I get no, but he could be yeah. to check the spam folder. Uh, I check it, but maybe. Okay, you. Not, not very. Okay, I, I can't look into the website. I oh, okay. Oh, from. Oh, I don't have the Oh, yeah. But some people that. Yeah. I want to say that I'm in the process of this and my manager and in the beginning, the first initial mail he sent to me to say like uh, let's keep the two weeks time frame uh, for answering and if you know for help you can 
you will mm -hmm. not have time answering those two weeks if or I will not have time, you will you know send mails and yeah. say to each other that. So I think that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. In initial mail to say let's have that time frame to and yeah. that was true? Uh yeah. <coughs> I mean, he said to me after a month like uh, I'm not having time. Okay. Uh, like I don't know when I will have time. No, a week. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, in the month during the process, ah, okay. it was regular. He said, like, I'm not sure I'm going to have time next two no, months. No, no, that's perfect. Like that. I said, like, yeah. okay. I'm, I think that's like reasonable to set a time frame for right. an initial meal and try yeah. to keep it. And if it gets, like, it's like if it's two weeks and you don't get response, like, send the big mail. Can I? Yes. I have experience because I, this is my second time I try to do this. And my first time was like, you are so overwhelmed for like, they only saw these guys are gods and I don't know nothing. And it was like, he sent me the bunch of lists. Of, and I was like, oh, I have to answer right every fucking phrase should be perfect and the grammar and whatever and it, it took me like i don't know a month just to say yes <laughs> no <laughs> it was like and, and the guy was like okay but what's going on uh, are you no no i'm too busy and you know and the first time it was like it was my problem actually right. because you want to be perfect and that's the problem i think it's like that's Come on, they give you the links, yeah. the way to, okay, look, if you don't know, there's the, you know, you just, you just need to take some time, and, and that's it. And this second time is like that, it's like, okay, if I don't know anything, but come on, I've been around years, and it's like, this should be fast, because come on, I know the work, I know what I'm doing, and it should be fast. I also have the feeling that applicants are usually too shy. I had this observation when I, I would later take about this, this ongoing of plans. There was a guy in Delia Gish who has uploaded or I sponsored for him 50 packages or so. And he is now teaching me things I'm not aware of. But getting this guy to, to apply was really hard. So he is, is, is running the whole Delia Gis team now and mm -hmm. finally he applied us. It took me one year to convince him because you felt like uh, too much. I, I don't want to, you know, something like... Oh, and if somebody doesn't want to apply, it's okay. Yeah, but, but some, uh, I think he said I'm not good enough, right? right? Which was definitely wrong. Yeah, that impression is, mm. yeah. yeah. Um, there are DDs who had to be told that they were, um, yes, definitely good enough to become a DD be because they already maintain 200 packages. Um, and yes, definitely good enough to be calling themselves the maintainer of this particular package because they've been doing the uploads for it for like two years now. Um, so this is, this is perfectly normal that you have people who think they're not good enough um, and convincing them otherwise might be difficult, but yeah. <laughs> It happens more often. I have experience like outside Debian community that people actually intimidated by Debian in our process. It was uh, even if I joke like uh, uh, Valve is giving free pa uh, free games for them developers and say like it's probably much easier you know to do a Mesa commit or something you know graphical stack. Yeah. Even it's not reality graph stack. It's much harder than applying actually for Debian membership, but. They have, you know, like, if you say, like, yeah, I apply for that, and they like, oh, whoa. You know. Yeah, that yeah. has, like, that intimidating, you know, public picture. I don't know how that happened, why that happened, but it's that. Yeah, um, it's difficult to say, I mean, we can't really say, anyone can become a Debian developer, apply course. now, and it's easy to do it, because there are but things even, to I do. Mean, when a lot of capable people yeah. that have, you know, the picture, like, um, Debian, it's like too hard, I'm going to you know, contribute to Fedora, it's much easier for me, or I'm going to do Arch packages, you know, Debian is like way too hard for me. But yeah. Even they didn't try at all. And that's yes. a that's paper or uh, Quality standards are like so high. Uh, I'm happy. Mm -hmm.
haven't explained to the Oh, sorry, can you hear it? So, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I, I can't hear it. So, uh, oh, sorry. Can you speak? Uh, I, I'll go to the second. Uh, I'm an advocate since March. And you are disturbing. Uh, I'm on the panel as received enough advocacies. Yes. Uh, but if I press that, no advocate. Button on the search of your own selection, mm -hmm. then I'm listed as received enough number of cases. Uh, like 10 other people on the list. Uh, I'm, I'm confused by this. Okay. That sounds like a bug. Whether it's my turn or somebody else's. Uh, so, applicants. <coughs> and then proceed in other focuses. No. Click on the click on the seven bark numbers. There are advocates. Uh, the last one now. Um. Okay, the activity poll may have gone missing. Um. Um, who is it? Again? Free rank? That's me. Oh! Yes. Oops! <laughs> <laughs> Applying for that in... Oh, I, oh, it's an I see! Different thing. It's an entirely different problem. <laughs> it's and entirely my fault. <laughs> 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 Uh, you see, I wanted to implement becoming Debian maintainer, also through the site. So yeah, I added an advocate for Debian maintainer button. Uh, but then that goes nowhere. <laughs> ah. <laughs> At the moment. <laughs> and it ended up over there and I sort of forgot it. And I guess some advocates clicked the wrong button. Yeah, at least three. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, oops, <laughs> um, but, so the lesson in this is, if you get no reply within March to August is about five months, uh, but even one week, uh, uh, send an email to nm at debian.org and ask what is going on, uh, because, yeah. Um, you would have been through it four months ago if you had done that. <laughs> we are. <laughs> so I will take that button away from the site. <laughs> um, but we should probably try to implement that thing because right now it's done manually. Yeah. <laughs> We, it, I should eventually, I should actually, the, the best solution is to implement it. <laughs> but at the moment, it's probably an, an improvement to take the button away. So to prevent the chaos in the whatever time it will take me to implement it. Okay. And then send an email to all the people that are in that state. And uh, so what happens now to him? He needs to contact his advocate and ask him to yes. send an email mm -hmm. to the yeah. and for raising that. Uh, by the way, uh, I, I always expected to be able to choose whether I'm applying for TM or DD. But actually, it was my advocate who mm -hmm. had the choice. Yeah. That's a bug it, it as was, well. It was somehow confusing. It, it was not clear from the documentation of the procedure. The yeah. Maybe you know, the it, was, it was so easy to implement in this way. <laughs> yeah, but what he's saying is we should probably take the communication 
Yeah. There's another potential factor that confusing things, which is that, and I think at this point it's only really old documentation, refers to Debian developers with uploading privileges as Debian maintainers. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, mm. poor me. No. No, with uploading. Ah, with yeah, them. with uploading, yeah. Is that yeah. WC Debian one? Oh. And yeah. uh, join whatever? Uh, maybe. It's also, I think it's also, just like, move. It's it's also like the, in, the, in the constitution. Uh, they make references to Debian maintainers, and, make and the maintainers meaning all, yeah. like all Debian developers, because this is like it meant Debian developers and like their ilk or yeah. something. I don't know. But yeah. no, it's it's mentors. This is maintainers, but not DMs. Uh, well, say Debian maintainers yeah. just say maintainers. What does yeah. it say Debian maintainers? It might be Debian lowercase m maintainers. Okay, what someone is? needs to re-read that and then make some editorial changes. <laughs> yeah, editorial, <laughs> watch out with that it's phrase. It's either in the constitution <laughs> or it's in like one of those like principal level documents. It may not be the constitution itself, but it's like one of the like really old big ones. Yeah. Uh, what am I if I list it as uploader? I'm um, not a maintainer. Am listed as uploader? In a package. I'm only listed ah, as oh, uploader. Oh, yeah. That's uh, yeah. Oh, that's that's a. Good for. Yeah, that, that term is uh, maintainer is slightly overloaded. Um, maintaining a package doesn't make you a formal Debian maintainer. Debian maintainer are you if you are in that Debian maintainer's keyring that allows you to actually upload stuff to Debian. Uh, if you are listed in a control file of a package that just makes you someone maintaining this package. Okay. So there's no point in getting my key signed to upload really? If you want to upload the package yourself, you need a signed key, yes. And then you can apply for Debian maintainer, which doesn't go through this website, but some other. Okay, process. all the new sponsor. I'm an old timer. I didn't follow. Uh, the sponsoring is something yet different, which is how you get your package uploaded if you're not uploading yourself, but ask the Debian developer to upload it. It's not really complicated, okay. but it's not uh, so lots of terms at once. Yeah. So if you have a package and you want to get it into Debian, you can either upload it yourself, for which you need permission, or you ask someone else to sponsor it for you. So the, the, in the control file, the maintainer field is the person that gets email if a bug is reported to the package? It's a team in this. The, exactly. Most often the team, yes. but it doesn't have to be. Policy requires the person And the uploader, well, uploaders are the people that can sign, appear in the change log yeah. as the usual maintainers instead of non-maintainer uploads. So the people that generally do the work in the package. Okay, what was the actual question? It's I'm listed as uploader. Yes. Yeah, which I'm makes you a contributor. <laughs> This means and the package maintainer. Yeah. yeah. You are one of the maintainers. The yeah, uploader is a maintainer. <laughs> yeah. Uploader. <laughs> package maintainer. <laughs> <laughs> the uploader field would better have been no, called the maintainer. Uh, maintainer. Yeah. Uploaders is a bad name in, in, in that case. It's you also used for uploading but doesn't make yeah, up, uploaders means that you are maintaining Debian package but you're not Debian maintainer. <laughs> so it is confusing. <laughs> yeah, and, and all uploaders are maintainers, that unless they Debian stop package. doing yeah, it. Yeah. But not all maintainers are uploaders, <laughs> because you can maintain yeah. things and ask somebody else to upload it. It used to be worse <laughs> when the new member process was called, was called new maintainer process. <laughs> <laughs> I, I checked the, uh, the constitution, there's no mention of the word Debian maintainer. Mm, okay. I think it's in one of the policies. I'm trying to find it now. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe. 
on w3w.org slash devil join or whatever it's called, I think it should just be removed because it's outdated and no one is working on it. Yeah. Uh, or should be should be moved to the wiki. Um, I, I just waved the five minute talk sign, but there's no gap between this talk and the next, so maybe we should end soon. Okay. Uh, well, uh, to summarize, the things that I wanted to know is. Side paper cuts, I guess the big deal is the arbitrage. Okay, it's an improvement. And uh, the site is written in Django. Whoever knows Python and Django and would like to help with uh, working on it um, uh, can get in touch with me. Uh, does, does that mean you get to cheat and make yourself? <laughs> um, <laughs> It means <laughs> that you are listed as a front desk contributor on contributors that you know. Right. Um, Just kidding, anyway. And uh, for the rest, uh, an MWNorg is the uh, email to use for pretty much anything, and it's a safe space. Uh, it's pretty hard that you write to that and somebody replies, you shall never be a DD ever again. Depends what you write, but you really need to put effort <laughs> Don't take that. that as a challenge, please. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. so, I guess that's so we should be expecting new, lots of new applicants soonish. Lots of new AM reports. <laughs> <laughs> that too, yes. It's the developer's reference. Developer's okay. reference. Ah. That it, like, it doesn't look like it's been updated since the split. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so there's no gap from this talk to the next, so we need to evacuate the room. No! <laughs>